All right, we're back for another video on neural networks. Uh, okay, so in this video, we are going to look at RProp, which is a modification. Uh, well, actually, it's a complete rethink of gradient descent. Just to remind you where we're at, excuse me. Um, this is from the previous video. The red line here is gradient descent, very, very small steps. The blue line is classical momentum, right? Very organic. Um, and you can see here, gradient descent took almost 700 iterations, adding in momentum, cut that down to 84. Uh, so that's a pretty good win. Turns out there's another way to uh, find solutions in a space like this. And RProp is one of these ways. The difference between RProp and gradient descent is that even the momentum version of gradient descent still depends on the size of the gradient. Um, and that means that in shallow regions, right, obviously plain gradient descent takes very small steps because it's very small. Momentum will build up speed, but with a very small gradient, that's like not tugging very hard on a ball and the coefficient of I'm sorry, I almost said friction. The coefficient of momentum being 0.9 in this scenario means that eventually that extra 10% will just get canceled out by this little tiny gradient and you can only get going so fast. Okay, so there is a terminal velocity with momentum, which perhaps isn't such a bad thing. Uh, you don't want to skip too far past uh, solutions. Um, so what is R prop? R prop goes like this. R prop looks at a position in the weight space and looks at the gradient. Um, each component of the gradient will be either zero, positive, or negative. Whatever it is, when you start it originally, it'll start moving in a direction that, uh, is, that matches the signs. So over here, you can see by looking at the regular gradient, because that is identically what the gradient is, and momentum follows it too, uh, over here, the gradient component for weight is negative because the component of this first uh, red arrow points to the left. Similarly, the component for bias points downwards, which means it's also negative. Um, so what our prop is going to do is it's going to say, okay, let's start moving that direction. And it's going to keep on moving that direction while the signs of the gradient for the components don't change. If the component flip sign. So once I get over here ish, right, the weight vectors, I'm sorry, the weight component of the gradient vectors actually point to the right. So over here, it's left hand pointing over here, it's right hand pointing. That means that it goes from negative to positive. Now when I flip signs like that, that means I've crossed some kind of minimum, right, I've crossed some, I've crossed over some place that I actually want to stop and go back into because I really want to end up down here. And if I flip signs, that means I'm increasing gradient, so I don't want to do that. What our prop's going to do is while I'm in a region like this, while the gradients all line up in the same direction, uh, well, this is component by component. So while the weight component is still negative, I'm going to head in the negative direction for the weight component, and I'm going to accelerate in the negative direction. When I get to a point like this, where I f skip over and now the weight is positive, that means I've gone too far. What I'm gonna do is take this step size in the weight direction, cut it in half, right? So I don't know if I mentioned this. Uh, when you're moving this direction or you're moving in, a, in the same direction as the current new gradient is, uh, you actually accelerate by a factor of 1.2. So the speed at which you head to the left for these first few steps will be increasing exponentially uh, by 120 per 120% every iteration. Now, the cool thing about our prop is that this is component by component. And that means the learning rates are actually adapting uh, individually. So you I store a rate for each component, which would be a lot of data uh, in a very large network, but it's only twice the size of the weights in the network, so that can't be that big of a deal. And for every time I make a step, I look at the sign of the gradient at the place I'm at in that component direction and compare it to the sign in the previous step. 
like I said, if they're the same, I'll increase my step by a factor of 1.2. If they're different, if they're opposite, right? If I've gone from here to here and they flip, then I will decrease that factor by a factor of two. Again, I will cut it in half, right? That'll be 0 0.5. Um, and I'm going to stop it, right? So then I treat the previous step as though it were zero and I stop movement along that component direction. Once I've stopped the movement, that means the next time around, um, the product of the gradients will be zero and whatever the new gradient is. And that means in that case, I will just start moving in the direction of the correct gradient, but the size of the step I take will be half the size of the previous one, okay? So let's see what that looks like. Let me turn on our prop and we'll graph it. Now it appears here in pink, which I hope isn't awful to look at. Let's look at these sections. Okay. So you can see I started up here at negative one four. Uh, the gradient is negative for both components. So I start moving straight down to the left at 45 degrees. Uh, until I get over here where I've actually flipped signs and it in reality in this case it, it jumbles around a few times and it's difficult to see what's going on um, so I won't focus too much on this but what's happening is I've made a step over here both the weight and the bias change signs so I turn around and need to be moving upwards at 45 degrees but I move that far uh, I move I'm sorry I move in that direction half the distance that I moved to get to this location. And that actually happens a couple times, right? Which means that those are falling exponentially. Uh, and then I get into a spot in here where one of them stays the same and I start heading that direction. So let's look at some of these over here. Now, blue, remember, is momentum. And you can see, even though uh, this is allowed to run downhill for quite a while, it isn't really getting any faster, right? This is pretty shallow. I'm still headed this direction. It's much faster than gradient descent, but I'm not, it's not getting a lot better very quickly. Now look at our prop. Our prop starts very small and accelerates exponentially until I get to this point. And it looks like here, the, I guess, bias, right? The vertical component flips signs. Uh, and so it gets set to zero. Keep in mind this horizontal component, this little step here is still in place, right? That little step right there matches that step right there. But the component that's moving me in the bias direction stops and says, okay, I flip signs. I need to take a break, reevaluate. Uh, and so the factor, the learning rate for this vertical bias component uh, gets cut in half. And then on the next iteration, iteration, I look at the sign of the gradient, whatever it is, I move in that direction. So at this point, that means I move to the right because the gradient is positive and I keep on doing that. Um, so, okay, sorry. So we got here, we stopped moving vertically because the bias flips signs. We're still moving horizontally because uh, the weight component hasn't changed signs, right? The weight is left and right, the bias is up and down. So after the next step, my previous weight was zero in the vertical direction. So what does the gradient say to do here? Well, it says apparently go down. So now I make a step in that direction and it's the same again. Over here, I hit a point where now the weight changes sign. Now the gradient of the weight is actually negative, which makes sense because this red line should be going down the minimum. Uh, so I stop moving in that direction. Uh, I continue moving downwards and then reevaluate my gradient again and the process continues, right? So this is very, very jagged. One of the things that's really cool, if you look over here, is how much bigger the steps are with our prop. Our prop grows exponentially all the time. It is capped by a maximum because you don't want it to just explode, uh, but it grows exponentially in each direction and adapts its step size component by component by looking at the signs. So it's actually, it's actually kind of a smart approach. Uh, now, as far as the numbers, check that out. Plain gradient descent, 690 steps. Momentum, classical momentum, 84 steps. R prop, 44 steps. So it's twice as good as momentum, which was 
you know, I don't know, almost a factor of 10 better than just plain gradient descent. So that's a pretty huge improvement. Now, there are tweaks to the IPROP, I'm sorry, to the RPROP algorithm. Uh, one of them is called IRPROP plus. Now there are all the, all the different um, variations. There's RPROP plus, there's RPROP minus, there's IRPROP plus and IRPROP minus. I'm not going to go through all of them, even though I do have them all implemented. Um, IR prop plus is kind of the, it's generally understood to be the best one. So let's take a look at that real quick. First of all, let me show you some code. If you look at, um, this is regular R prop. This is the meat and potatoes right here. This compares the sign of the gradient in each component currently and what it was previously. If their product is positive, they have the same sign. So the learning rate for this individual component gets multiplied by eta plus, which is 1.2 and scaled up. The step is then whatever the sign says, that's the direction you should be going, times that length. Okay, this will always be of size one, which means this is literally the size of the step I'm taking. And then I save off the previous value. If it flips sign, right, if this product is negative, the learning rate gets multiplied by eta minus, which is 0.5 scales it down. My previous step I set to be zero. That stops me from moving in that direction. And then I just look to see what happens next time. Next time, this product current times previous will be zero. You end up in this case, I look at the sign. This learning rate has already been shrunk, the previous iteration, and I move in that direction. Okay, very straightforward. IRProp plus makes a small tweak. IRProp plus does the following. Everything is the same except when I flip signs. When I flip signs, I look at the error now and compare it to what the error was previously. If this new error at this new location is worse, right? if this is greater than my error previously, this delta right here is going to be set to negative this junk. This junk right here is what the step was previously. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, OK, uh, I went too far, and I went so far over that the error is in fact worse. Um, I've scaled the learning rate down by a factor of two. Um, I'm going to actually move back to the place I was just a second ago and stop moving in this direction and reevaluate the gradient again, which will then send me in the correct direction. Now, it's important to note that in the event that I've moved too far past a minimum, so this is flip signs, but the error is in fact lower, this doesn't happen, right? I don't actually want to go back. This is a better place in the solution space. I just want to stop, okay? So this is a very minor tweak, but it has pretty big uh, improvement number-wise. So let me go back and turn on IRProp Plus, and let's look at all of them together. All right, so IRProp plus is actually going to be shown here. It looks like black. It's actually like a navy blue or something. And there it is. Now, it, it will be difficult to see, and I'm not even sure if there's any specific examples of here. Oh, that might be one where it's taken a back step. Yeah, so this is one of these cases, I think, where it goes over. It's gone too far. The error is much worse. I step back in that direction and then I keep going. So let's um, let's try a different location in the weight space uh, just to get a feel for it. So let's instead of starting from negative one four let's start over here at like two four. Okay so let me change this to a two and let's run it again. Okay once again red is direct gradient descent, blue is momentum, uh, pink is RProp, and this navy is IRProp plus. You can see it actually does a little bit better job over here. And as far as the numbers go, in this case, regular gradient was about 600. Momentum gave us 90. RProp is 22. IRProp plus is 19. So again, a little bit better. Okay. So now there's a bunch of different versions of RProp. There's a bunch of different tweaks. Some some do the backtracking. Some don't. Um, but that's a big old discussion. So let me know if you guys want any other kinds of methods described here, and I'll try and do them if I can. 
Um, and otherwise, I will just see you guys later.